Okay, guys, uh, this calculus lesson is on uh, Riemann sum and in, uh, and definite integral. So let's go ahead and get started with this, you guys, okay? So um, uh, that still says Riemann sum right there. So as n approaches infinity, it's interchangeable with delta x. There should be an x right there, delta x approaching 0. Because as n approaches infinity, then the widths of those rectangles are approaching 0. And so the widths of those rectangles are delta x. All right, so this is um, this is my Riemann's sum right here, you guys. This is uh, right here. The definition is just Riemann's sum. If f is uh, defined on the closed interval a, b, and the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum of i equal 1 to n of f of c sub i times delta x, if that exists, then f is integrable. And uh, the limit equals the integral of a to b of f of x dx. And so we're going to use our definition of um, uh, what we did before. Um, and I'll show you. Here's an example here, just a second. So if a function f is continuous on closed interval a, b, then f is always integrable um, on the closed interval a, b. So we're going to go ahead and use the definition uh, to evaluate uh, the Riemann's definition to evaluate this uh, closed interval. And the reason why it's, uh, it's uh, definite integrals because we have bounded by numbers right here. Before we didn't have these numbers, so we're always adding plus c, but this eliminates the plus c. So of 2x dx, okay? Now remember, 2x dx, y equals 2x is just a linear equation we'll talk about in a, limit, in a minute, okay? 1 is your upper limit, and negative 2 is my lower limit. Let me get rid of this box right here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and rewrite uh, this in terms of this right here, okay? So remember um, that uh, delta x is uh, b minus a over n. So here's delta x, so it's going to be um, uh, b minus a over n, so I get 3 over n. And then c sub i is delta x, so it's going to be 3 over n times i plus my starting point, which is negative 2, okay? So, and, and then, so let's go ahead and plug it into this right here. I'm going to do f of c sub i, so f of this times delta x, so times 3 sub 3 over n. Okay, I get that right there. And then, don't forget, this is 2x, so I'm going to go ahead and um, put the 2 right here, so it's going to be 2. And there we go, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 2 through on this side, and distribute the 3 over n through on this side to get uh, this right here. And remember my I formulas when we're doing uh, limits right here. The I formula becomes uh, n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay, so I'm going to make this n squared plus n over 2. All right, so it's actually 18 times the quantity n squared plus n over 2n squared. And the limit of 12 is going to be as n goes to infinity of I to 1. This is just 12n. Remember that? So that's going to get me to this stage right here. Okay, and then as the limit as n approaches infinity, you guys, I get 18n squared over 2n squared is this right here. And then this over 2n squared, when n goes to infinity, the number on the bottom gets bigger. So that's where the plus 0 came from. Here the n's cancel, so you get the minus 12. So we get negative 3. The, the actual answer is 5 because it's the area of this triangle plus this triangle. And the area of this triangle is 4. The area of this triangle is 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. And it's really negative 3, and so how we're getting negative 3, and that's our answer for right now, is uh, it's the top minus the bottom right there. So we'll, we'll get more into uh, uh, the 5 later right now, but for now the answer is going to be negative 3. Okay, properties and rules of integration. The integral of uh, a to a um, is 0 because you're not going anywhere. The width is 0 right there from a to a. All right, and then the integral from a to b is the same as negative, the integral from b to a. Okay, so um, it's the negative integral. And the integral, this is like the, the, I call it the integral addition postulate. Remember the segment addition postulate, you guys? If I had a segment right here and I'd said this piece plus this piece equals the whole piece, well, that's what this says. This integral right here from a to c plus this integral right here from c to b equals the entire integral from a to b. Okay, so it can be broken up. So, for example, uh, the integral from 0 to 3 and this one from 3 to 5 is 0 to 5. Also, you guys, this integral right here, and I showed you with a picture, the integral from uh, 0 to negative 2 plus the integral from 0 to positive 4 is the same as the integral from negative 2 to 4. And that's what this says right here. Alrighty. Okay, so uh, here's another one. Uh, this constant right here just gets floated out in front of the integral, so that's easy enough to understand. Okay, so let's go ahead and sketch a region 
uh, whose area is given by the definite integral. Then use the geometric formula to evaluate the integral uh, and the a is greater than zero and r is greater than zero if we're dealing with the circle right here. Okay, so think of uh, geometry y equals three. That would be a horizontal line y equals three right there. Okay, and we're going from negative a to positive a. Well, I don't know how big a is, but I'll just say it's that big right there. So it's that big on that side right there. So here's y equals 3 right here. So this is a rectangle. So the base is 2a, the height is 3, so the area is base times height. So I get 6a on that. And that's what they're asking for, to sketch the region. Okay, here, think of this. Uh, y equals 2 minus the absolute value of x. Well, I'm going to rewrite it as y equals negative the absolute value of x plus 2. Remember, the absolute value of x is a v at the origin, so this negative says it's going to be going down, and the plus 2 says it just starts at 2. Then I have a triangle right here. Triangles are 1 half base times the height, so the base is 2a, so 1 half 2a times the height 2, and I get 2a. Okay, here. Again, think of y equals x plus 2. If I graph y equals x plus 2, it's a line right there. We're going from negative 1 to 3. So this is forming a trapezoid. Remember, the area of a trapezoid is 1 half the sum of the bases times the height. So 1 half the sum of the bases, the parallel sides, times the height. The height is this perpendicular segment between them. And you get 10. All right. Okay, here, y equals the square root of 4 minus x squared. And then if I square both sides, I get y squared equals 4 minus x squared, and then add x squared to both sides. And do you remember this equation? This is an equation of a circle. The center is at 0, 0. The radius is 2. Okay, since this is not plus or minus, then it's only the top half of the circle. So it's only that thing. Remember, the circle is pi r squared, so this one's 1 half pi r squared, and the radius is 2. So you get 2 pi on that. All right, uh, let's see what else do I have. So evaluate the integral using the following values. Okay, so they're going to give us uh, these. From 0 to 3 is 4. From 3 to 6 is negative 1. And it's just f of x dx. Okay, so let's do it from 0 to 6. All right, so from 0 to 6 is going to be, I'm going to use my integral addition postulate. 0 to 3, here's 3 to 6. So it's going to be 4 plus negative 1. Uh, and I get 3. Okay, this one from 6 to negative 3 is the negative from 3 to 6, so it's negative negative 1, which is positive 1. Okay, this one from 3 to 3, remember that has width 0, so the, the area is going to be 0. All right, and this one from 3 to ne uh, 6 is, here's 3 to 6 is negative 1, but this negative 5 says it's negative 5 times negative 1, so it's positive 5. All right, okay, so set up the, uh, the definite integral. Uh, that yields the area of the region. Okay, so this uh, function right here yields this graph right here. Okay, and they want us to go from negative 1 to 1. So it's going to be the integral of this from negative 1 to 1. That's the answer. All right, now for fun, you guys, can you see that uh, this side equals this side right here? So um, can, you, can I convince you that uh, it's twice this side over here? And so I'm going to call it twice the integral from 0 to 1 of this dude right here. Um, for now, this is the answer right here. This is the answer. But you'll find out later, you guys, that 0 is a lot easier to work with. So in the next section, I'll show you in the, uh, that 0 is way easier to work with right here. So for now, uh, for fun, uh, it's twice the integral from 0 to 1 of that guy right there. Okay, But for today, this is going to be our answer. All right, that's it. If you're in my calculus class, I would assign that as your homework. Take care.